So we continue to change. So there are big things afoot in the world. We are changing in some unique and sometimes not unique ways. We are changing in dramatic ways. Uh, our economy is changing and uh, in the short run and in the long run, and economists have increasingly begun to talk about something called the new normal. The new normal. That's different from the old normal. The old normal is dead. It is gone. It has been buried. That ended in the beginning of 2008. The, uh, the recession hastened its end, but the demographic changes, the aging of society, is is the main is the main culprit in this. Well, what does the new normal mean? The new normal means that going forward into the future, we will still see growth, but it's going to be slower growth, about 85 percent of what we've been used to. However, government revenues, state and local government revenues, probably slower, probably around two thirds of what we've been used to. <clears throat> That also means slower growth of wages, slower growth of your retirement savings. Uh, that will put pressure on you to increase savings, which will reduce the amount of money that you have for consumption, which since consumption is now 70% of our total economy, that means ultimately slower economic growth and, and continues to have sort of a circular kind of impact, a reinforcing impact. Retirements will increase in most of the job openings this decade, probably two or three to one. Uh, most of the job openings this decade will be due to replacements, not to new job creation. We will have more and more people retiring. And, and one of the problems, one of the issues that is beginning to emerge is that the people that are leaving at the one end have a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge and a lot of background and unique skills, skills that they have either developed or created on their own over years and years of work. And the people that are replacing them or potentially available to replace them do not have those skills. And skill mismatch is becoming an increasing issue in replacing retiring workers and it's not a front page issue, but I believe within a couple of years it will be a front page issue. Just ask any employer right now, this is a critical issue. I'm seeing some head shake. How you doing back there? I know. <clears throat> and the concepts of creative destruction and innovative, uh, 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 disru uh, disruptive innovations. Creative destruction is something that, uh, that uh, that an economic philosopher uh, by the name of Schumpeter talked about in, in the first half of last century. Uh, you know, it's sort of a strange view of, of, of uh, how economists view the world, but recessions can actually be a good thing because it gets rid of all the bad blood and, uh, and inefficient organizations, and you get sort of creative destruction and you say, well, you know, that's, that's interesting, but, you know, there's a lot of pain and, and it's sort of a silly notion. Except consider this. If you go back to the Dow 12, there, there was only 12 back in 1890. There's 30 now. Uh, if you go back to the Dow 12 in 1890, there is only one company that is still on that list. And that's General Electric. The rest of the companies you've never heard of before. These were the biggest and most powerful companies of the United States. These were the GMs at the time. You've never even heard of them 100 years later. They might as well not even have existed. National lead. Anybody ever heard of national lead? You have. OK. A couple people. A couple people have. OK. It's one of those obscure, it doesn't exist. No component of it exists. It's dead. It's kaput. It's gone. And most of the Dow 30 today got their start during the Great Depression. It's times like this that things get started. This is the time that the next great organizations, the next great corporations, the next great economic leaders, this is the time that they're starting. 
creative disrupt destruction in disruptive innovations. Disruptive innovations, there's a growing body of literature on this, but these are not linear kinds of things. These are not evolutionary kinds of things. These are not incremental concepts. But, well, gee, if we can just, you know, make some adjustments here and there and increase efficiency by 2% over here and 5% over there and, 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 you know, we can save 5% of our budget. No, that's not what we're talking about. Disruptive innovation means basically everything that's old is tossed out and there's a whole new thing in basically at right angles to everything else. It is a dramatic event. Uh, it's an event that, that you will notice when it happens. In 1890, 1890 is a great flip <coughs> time, you know, it's a great time to, to beat on. In 1890, there was a huge problem in our society. A huge, enormous problem of pollution. There are all these horses. Every city, all the transportation means were horses. Yeah, there were street cars, but most people got around by horse. And you know, what do you do with all this stuff? And I mean, this was a huge, enormous problem, and nobody had a solution to it. And then somebody came along with this notion of a horseless carriage that doesn't produce pollution. Mm -hmm. Well, now we know it does, <laughs> but, but but overnight, overnight. <coughs> That changed everything. That changed everything. A disruptive event, a disruptive innovation, and there is great pressure for these to happen right now. And there will be organizational disrupt disruptors, and and that's going to change organizations in some very fundamental fundamental ways. And all that leads to more uncertainty about about the future. So the new normal, we're in the new normal. The old normal is dead, it's kaput, it's gone, it's been buried. We've said goodbye to it, but not everybody's aware of this yet. <laughs> I don't know, I've done a whole bunch of town hall meetings in the last few months, mostly centered around the census for congressional members and, and legislators, and it seemed like every one of them had at least a few folks there that were really angry. They couldn't tell you why they were angry. They were just mad in hell, and they wanted it to stop. And after one of these, I, I was driving home. It was about 10 o'clock at night. I go, what in the hell is going on here? And it suddenly struck me that what we're really talking about is the Hoover Ross concept of grieving. That there are folks grieving for the old normal. And I think this is the way you're going to hear it. There are folks that are still in the denial phase. This has not happened. Nobody knows that people that, you know, we're not in the new normal, we're in the old normal. It's, it's, things were just like they were. And, and once we get past this little rough spot in the road, this recession, once we recover from that next year, everything's going to return to normal. It's going to return to the way it was. And that's not going to happen. We're in a new normal. The world changed in 2008. Everything changed. And, but there are still people thinking, well, you know, if we can just adjust, make an adjustment over here and delay this over there and, and, and pick this low hanging fruit over here and, and make this shift over here someplace else, we can get by this rough patch. And then everything's going to return. And that's not going to happen. We're in a new normal. This is a permanent situation. It's a permanent change. There's pre-2008 and there's post-2008. 2008 was the demarcation. 